peace and blessings, family. What's up with all the day dreamers out there? Please live it. Don't sleep through this thing. So I want to talk about a particular Bible verse that um, that is misquoted very often. It's been misquoted in the pulpit. It's been misquoted even in Bible studies, and I'm trying to figure out how that happens when it's Bible study, but I have heard it misquoted in Bible study. Um, even in just common conversation where the topic is fitting, we, we, we misquote this particular scripture, right? Um, and, and, and the crazy part about it is, the interesting thing part about it is, many of you, I won't say many, but some of you are actually misquoting this verse, thinking that your misquote is a direct quote. In other words, you think this mis misquote is actually book, chapter, and verse verbatim, right? You really actually think that, and it's not. So what is this Bible verse, right? What is this Bible verse? Let's dive into it. So I'm going to give you the, 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 the misquote first. Then I'm going to give you the actual written verse itself, and we're going to analyze the differences through this, okay? So here we go. Here goes the misquote. But you meant it as evil unto me, but God meant it for my good. Now, tell the truth. You know that you've said this before. Pastors, pulpit ministers, um, even to those of you who are out there that are um, that, that are Bible facilitators, everyday conversations and all that other stuff. You've quoted it just like that. Right. I'm going to say it again. But you meant it for evil unto me. Oh, but this part, that section right there, we got variants of that. You meant it for evil unto me. You meant it to harm me. You meant it to hold me back. You meant it to destroy me. You meant it to keep me from. We love it. Like we have different variances like that, right? But this part right here, we do not deviate from. But you meant it as harm unto me, as evil unto me, to hold me back, to keep me from getting, to destroy me. But God meant it for my good. Now, that's how we quote it. That's, that's, the, that's the misquote. Here's the actual quote in the Bible. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, it reads as this. But as for you, this is Joseph talking to his brothers. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. I'm, I'm going to read that again because I did the misquote quote twice. I'm going to do this again. But as for you. You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is, the, as it is this day to save much people alive. All right. So now that we got the misquote and, and what's written laid out, what's the difference between these two? Well, with the misquote, it says you meant it as evil unto me, but God meant it for my good. Joseph doesn't say that last part. Joseph doesn't say that you, God meant it for my good. This is what Joseph says. He says, but God meant it unto good. But Joseph keeps talking. He just doesn't stop right there. We stop talking after we mention ourselves. You, you notice that? When after, after we glorify ourselves, after we give ourselves a pat on the back, after we make ourselves out to be the important part of the story, the centerpiece of the story, the captain of the ship, the one who sits on the mountain, after we make ourselves out to be somebody, we stop talking. But Joseph does this. Joseph says, but God meant it unto good. And he continues to talk to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Number one, Joseph doesn't even make it about himself. This quote is not about Joseph. Joseph does not make himself the centerpiece. He does not make him the captain of the ship. He does not make himself the one who sits on the mountain. He does not make himself the hero of the story. He, 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 he talks about, he says, you meant it for evil unto me, but God took the situation and he, he did it to save multiple people. Joseph is making the claim that God is the centerpiece. God is the captain of the ship. God is the one who sits on the mountain. God is the one who did this so that you might be saved. But not only you, my brothers, but many people can be saved alive. It's not about me. You see, this is what we've done. We've taken a biblical scripture that is God-centered, that focuses on what God has done, and we make it about us. Us. It's gone from God centered. If we quote it correctly within context and apply it properly within context, it go. It has gone from God centered to now being misquoted out of context and used out of context as man centered. We, we've made the Bible a self-help, self-motivating book. We've devalued it of God. And so it's just like any other book that sits on the shelf. It preaches well, but it's not sound doctrine. 
And it's a shame, and I'm going to have to say this, it's sad, it's a shame, it's wrong, it needs to stop. Those pastors, those, those ministers in the pulpit, those Bible facilitators who are misquoting this scripture and making your congregation look at themselves as being the special part of all of this rather than it being pointed towards God as Joseph did. Joseph is second under Pharaoh. And he does not mention himself in this particular verse. He's second under Pharaoh and he made it about God. He's second under the, 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 the entity of Egypt that is looked at as a God. And he doesn't even make it about Pharaoh. He makes it about the God of heaven that sits above Pharaoh. While we're sitting here making it about ourselves, Joseph is in the second highest position and doesn't make it about him. But you're constantly making it about you. We got to get back to the Bible being a God-centered book and stop making it a man-centered 